This recording gives a second example of finding the volume of a solid of revolution using the disk method. Once again, we're considering a region bounded by y equals f of x, the x-axis, and in the general case, it would be bounded by lines x equals a and x equals b. And in that general case, if we revolve the graph of y equals f of x about the x-axis, the volume of the resulting solid would be pi times the integral from a to b of f squared x dx. Let's have a look at an example. And this example at a glance looks a little bit more complicated, as we're wanting to find the volume obtained when the region bounded by y equals x to the 4 and y equals x is revolved around the x-axis. How will we approach this problem? First good step is always to draw a graph of the situation. What does y equals x look like first of all? Well that's just a straight line of gradient 1 through the origin. What about y equals x to the 4? What does that look like? Now that takes values very close to 0 when you're looking at values of x that are close to 0. But then it starts to get steeper, particularly once you get above x equals 1, it starts to increase quite rapidly, this function does. In blue, I've now added to the sketch an approximate sketch of y equals x to the 4. What is the question actually asking us, though, in relation to each of these graphs? Well, it's asking us for the volume obtained when the region bounded by these graphs is revolved around the x-axis. So we're interested in this region here, imagining what happens when it's revolved around the x-axis. An important thing to know will be what are the actual x values here when we're looking at the boundaries of this region. Looks as if this first point here is actually at x equals 0, which makes sense in fact, because both y equals x to the 4 and y equals x do pass through the point 0, 0. But what is this value of x here? How can we find that? And the easiest way to find that would be to look at the point of intersection of the two graphs by working out x to the 4 equals x. From there, to solve that, that just gives us x to the 4 minus x equals 0. We could take x out of this as a common factor, giving x times x cubed minus 1 equals 0. We can see that has the solution x equals 0 corresponding to our point here. This cubic actually has just one real solution, which in fact turns out just to be x equals 1. Therefore, going back to our graph, we now know that the x value here, when we project down from the point of intersection of the graphs to the x-axis, that value of x is just x equal to 1. But we're wanting to find the volume obtained when this region is revolved around the x-axis, whereas our formula that we saw is to do with the region bounded by one particular function of x and the x-axis and lines x equals a and b. So how can we use this formula then for this type of example when our region is bounded by two curves, neither of them being the x-axis? What we can do is consider first the region bounded by y equals x to the 4, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 1. We could work that out using this formula. Similarly, if we considered a region bounded by y equals x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 1, we could also work that out. And if we look at this, because y equals x is the upper curve, that region would be larger. In fact, the region bounded by y equals x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 1, when that was revolved around the x-axis, we'd actually end up with cone-shaped cross-sections in this case. But 
we would want to take away from that the region that is bounded by y equals x to the 4, which is the lower curve and the x-axis between 0 and 1, as we would only want the volume of the region remaining once we removed that part that was connected with y equals x to the 4. That is, we'd be starting with the volume of the cone that I've drawn in black, which would be the volume of the region bounded by y equals x, the x-axis and the lines x equals 0 and 1, but we'd be wanting to remove the part I've shaded in blue, which is the region bounded by y equals x to the 4, the x-axis and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 1. So that if we did that, we would then be left with, in this solid, the red parts, which would be the actual volume that we are looking for in the 3D solid. So let's look at the volume of the outside cone in black first of all. Using our formula, that's pi times the integral from 0 to 1. And that was to do with the volume associated with the region when y equals x was revolved around the x-axis. So if f of x is x, f squared x is x squared. So we're wanting pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx to get the volume of that cone. Then from that we're subtracting the volume when the function y equals x to the 4. The region associated with that and the x-axis between 0 and 1 is revolved around the x-axis. So that'll be pi times x to the 4 squared is what we're going to be integrating there from 0 to 1. And this will then give us the volume of the required region revolved around the x-axis. From here then, the volume is going to be pi times the antiderivative of x squared, that's just x cubed on 3, from 0 to 1, minus pi times, now this bit here, x to the 4 squared means we're actually integrating x to the 8 with respect to x. And the antiderivative of x to the 8 is just x to the 9 on 9. Again, we'll be evaluating that from 0 to 1. That's then going to give us pi times 1 cubed divided by 3 minus 0 cubed divided by 3. Subtract pi times 1 to the 9 divided by 9 minus 0 to the 9 divided by 9. When we work that out, that just becomes 1 cubed is just 1. So that's all just pi times a third, or pi on 3. This bit here just becomes pi on 9. Therefore, the volume of the solid we require, in fact, works out to be 2 pi divided by 9. So as in the previous example, I always strongly recommend setting up a sketch of the situation if you have any doubts what's happening. And here, because we were looking at a region bounded by two curves, we can see that it was very helpful to know which was the upper curve, which was the lower curve, in order to help us set up the situation correctly, in order to find the volume of the resulting solid.